Hi, welcome to Car Engineering Simplified and today's video is all about brake calipers. If you happen to miss the first video about master cylinders, don't worry, there'll be a link in the description below. Let's jump in. So brake calipers can be put into two groups, fixed and floating. There's loads of similarities in how they function, how they operate. So let's start off with our floating caliper. If we were to strip the floating caliper down, you'll see there's not many components. We have the main caliper body, we have a piston, we have a fluid seal, and over there we have a dust boot. And that's it. So as a driver, when you operate the brakes, what exactly is happening? As we said in the previous video, the master cylinder generates a fluid pressure and passes it down the brake pipes. This comes in the back of our caliper and acts on the back of the piston within the caliper pushing the caliper piston out in towards the brake disc. When we release the brake disc, this, cali this piston is pulled back, but there's no springs. What happens is this fluid seal here, as it comes out, it twists slightly, it deforms slightly. When you remove your foot off the brake and all that pressure disappears, this rubber seal snaps back into position, pulling the piston away from the disc. But that's only one half of the story. Let's head off down to the workshop and see how it works in, in reality. So here we have an example of the first type of, of caliper, the sliding caliper. It's quite a large example. And what we can see if I turn it over, we can see the friction pads situated here, a retaining clip to keep this side of the caliper in contact with the carrier. And this large domed area here is the piston and our flexible brake pipe will be situated here to put brake fluid in the back of it. We've got one here that's all stripped down so we can see it a little bit easier, clearer. There is our piston that's going to come out and push the brake pad or one side of the brake pad into contact with the first side of the rotor. If I just take the sliding carrier off the sliding carrier or the sliding piston should I say is bolted to the carrier the carrier is fixed the carrier doesn't move at all and as fluid pressure acts this way on the piston when the pad makes contact with the disc it physically pulls the, the, the body of the caliper back this way and ensures that the other friction pad clamps the other side of the uh, brake disc. Very quickly, if we just screw this on a few threads. It is quite difficult to move and I won't be able to move the caliper, it'll be the carrier itself that moves, but as you can see here I can get the caliper carrier to slide backwards and forwards. Like I say, it is quite tricky to keep everything in line. It slides backwards and forwards. There we go, that's better. Sliding backwards and forwards. So both friction material brake pads make contact with the disc. Here's an example of two new brake pads that will go in there and you can see they've got a leading chamfered edge on there that helps to reduce noise when we make an initial contact and three lugs here this one will be positioned inside the piston to keep that pad firmly in position in there. Okay, so that was the floating caliper. Now let's have a look at the fixed caliper. The first thing we should notice from this image here is the fact that it's got two pistons, one either side, the brake disc. If we were to strip this component down, you'll see many of the same components. We have fluid seals, we have dust boots, we have one, two, three pistons. We've split the main caliper body in half and what the big difference here is the fact that it's got channels that allows brake fluid to pass from one half to the other. The operation of it is, is no different. 
Fluid pressure acts on the back of the pistons. The pistons move forward. When the driver releases the brake pedal, those fluid seals snap back into position and pull the piston back into its natural resting position. Let's head off back down to the workshop. The other example of caliper was the fixed caliper. Slightly smaller, but now what you can see hopefully is it has a piston either side of the brake disc. Your pads will be situated in the centre and fluid would enter both chambers and push the pistons in together. So we've got a nice more of a performance caliper here where it's a multi-piston. It's got two pistons this side, two pistons this side, but effectively it's still a fixed caliper. Fluid enters through this connection here and the small passages that will transfer fluid to the other side of the, the caliper. So when we press our foot brake, all four pistons in this case will come out and clamp the brake disc. Here are the pads for this particular one. And as they sit in there, these are held in place with a, with a nice clip as it slides through. Slides through, making contact with the clips, goes all the way over, over this final log. I just need to get a, a screwdriver to fit, flip that over and the pads will be held in place, sitting on the brake disc in between the centres there, in, in between the centre of the brake friction material there. One big advantage that brake discs have is the fact that they're self-adjusting. As the friction material on the pad starts to wear down, this piston will remain further and further out and the void in the back will be taken up by brake fluid. This is why I said in the previous video that if your reservoir, your brake reservoir is showing towards the minimum mark, it may be the fact that your brakes need changing or your brake pads need changing and don't top the system up. So why, can, why do we get this large configuration of brake discs? Single piston sliding caliper, twin piston sliding caliper, twin piston fixed, four piston fixed, a six piston fixed here, and the last one there, an eight piston fixed. Well, it's all to do with force. More high performance vehicles require more force to stop them. We need to convert that kinetic energy to heat energy quicker. We need a larger brake caliper. If we can increase the surface area of the piston acting on the back of the pad for the driver's same pressure, we will get a greater force at the disc. We will be able to stop the vehicle a lot faster. There can be some drawbacks to having a large caliper surrounding the, the disc. We reduce ventilation and cooling, but generally that's offset by the requirements of needing a greater force. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. See you soon.